wireless tethering. By the end of today's video, you're gonna know a lot more about it. Well, hi everyone, and welcome to Pal to Tech. Today, we are talking about wireless tethering for Fujifilm cameras, how to set it up, what are your options, and some tips and best practices to make it easier to use. We are only gonna be talking about wireless tethering. Of course, you can always tether your camera to a wired USB connection, but for now, let's dive right into wireless tethering. There are three main components needed to successfully use wireless networking. Your Wi-Fi network, the software that is installed on your computer or your tablet, and of course, your camera. And as we go through this video, I will mention compatible Fuji cameras that can be used in each situation that we'll be discussing. The first component is your Wi-Fi network. And assuming that you have a wireless router, I recommend making sure that it is set to broadcast your Wi-Fi signal at five gigahertz, if speed is the most important consideration for you. By speed, I mean how fast your photos are gonna travel from your camera to your computer. A five gigahertz Wi-Fi signal is much faster than a 2.4 gigahertz. How However, a 2.4 gigahertz signal, even though slower, will travel much further and it will not have as much interference from walls or objects that are in the way. Some routers even offer both types of frequency, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, but you're gonna need to see the instructions that came with your particular type of router. There are other considerations as well, depending upon your network, connected devices, security, network traffic, and so forth. But to keep things simple, I will assume that you have access access to at least one Wi-Fi network that you can connect to. Next component is your computer or a tablet. Setting this up involves two main steps. The first is connecting it to the same network that you plan on using with your camera. And second, installing the correct software or apps that will allow for wireless tethering. We'll get to the choices and how to use them a bit later on in the video. But for now, make sure that whatever computer or device you plan on using, you are connecting it to the same Wi-Fi network that you plan on connecting your camera to. Also, instead of using a Wi-Fi signal for your computer to connect to, you could connect your computer directly to your Wi-Fi router using an ethernet cable. For example, if you have this router right here, it's broadcasting a Wi-Fi hotspot called pal to tech Studio that you'll be connecting your camera to. Well then, you have the option to connect your computer to the back of the same router using an ethernet cord. This should also work because both are on the same network. The camera is connected wirelessly, right, to the router's Wi-Fi, and the computer is connected to the same router via the ethernet cable. Well, in theory at least, because much of this depends on how your router has been set up. If you do end up having any trouble, try connecting both the camera and the computer wirelessly to the same Wi-Fi network without the ethernet cable and see if that helps you. Let's now set up the final component of wireless tethering, your camera. And and for today's demo, I will be using the Fujifilm X-T5. However, many X-series cameras can connect wirelessly and tether. Most of them will need the Fujifilm X Acquire app, which I'll discuss later on. Setting up your Fujifilm camera for wireless tethering is really a two-part process, and I want you to think of your Wi-Fi network and your router as a crowded waiting room for your camera. But your camera needs a key to get into this room. So the first part of the process is registering the correct Wi-Fi network and then giving the camera the credentials to go inside. And as soon as your camera can access the Wi-Fi network, you know, the room, so to speak, it will remember it. And it's gonna use that key for future visits whenever you wanna go out and start tethering. But just entering the Wi-Fi room and standing around is not enough. Your camera also has to announce to the computer and the network that it's actually there, that it's actually on the Wi-Fi network. This is a two-part process. First, the camera gets access to the Wi-Fi network. And second, it uses a special setting that I'll tell you about in a minute to announce to your computer, right? The tethering software on your computer. Okay, I'm here. I'm here, I'm in the room, I'm on the Wi-Fi network and I'm ready to tether photos. <laughs> Let's go over exactly how this works. So the first thing is to go into the network area of your menu. On the X-T5, it looks like this. On many older Fuji cameras, it's located in the wrench area under connection setting in this area right here. 
There's also a menu choice on the X-T3 and earlier that's called PC Autosave. We're not gonna be going over that for the purposes of this video, so don't worry about it. The first thing I recommend that you do is perform a wireless reset of the camera. This is my go-to solution if I'm having trouble connecting the camera or tethering wirelessly. It gets you off to a clean start before you begin setting up your camera. Next, you're gonna to need to go into network setting right here. You have two choices, access point setting and IP address setting. The IP address setting is more advanced and it often involves getting a gateway address and subnet mask from your router. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's good. Just choose access point setting instead. That's what most people are gonna to wanna to use anyway. Inside that menu, you'll see two options, simple setup and manual setup. These are very misleading names because if you choose simple setup, it may not be so simple. It requires you to physically access your router, okay? Find this WPS button, and then, if your router even has one, and then you have to obtain a special pin code from the router's documentation. Instead of messing around with all of that, I prefer to choose manual setup for the access point settings. Then choose select from network list. When you do, you'll see a list of nearby Wi-Fi networks. Let me repeat the simple way to do this again. Go into network setting, choose access access point setting, choose manual setup, and choose select from network list. When you are choosing the Wi-Fi network in this list here, make sure you choose the same Wi-Fi network on that little screen you're about to register the camera on with the same Wi-Fi network you registered your computer on earlier. Once you choose, you'll be taken to a screen to enter your Wi-Fi password. Here's a handy tip. If your Wi-Fi password contains some lowercase letters and you quickly just start putting in the password on the camera, the camera will fail to connect and for extra fun, it won't tell you why. So instead, make sure that you first select this icon right here to change the keyboard to lowercase before you type a lowercase letter in the password if your password contains a lowercase letter. You can toggle back to uppercase as needed as well as toggle symbols and characters. Once you're done, choose set. Then you wait while the camera registers itself to your Wi-Fi network. This can take up to 30 to 60 seconds or so. Once it's done, you'll see it say registration completed. If you don't see that, try resetting your network settings and connecting again. If that doesn't work, Perhaps try a different Wi-Fi network. A lot of failed connections depend on how your router is configured, so you may need to tweak additional router settings using the admin panel of your router. Assuming that you have received the registration completed message, you can return back to the menu. At this point, your camera is now registered on your Wi-Fi network. It has now entered the room and it's just waiting there. In order for your camera to begin wirelessly tethering, it must announce itself to the software that's gonna be on your computer. To make your camera do this, go into the network area of your menu and choose connection mode. From there, you're going to want to pick the one that says wireless tether shooting fixed. As soon as you do, the back of the camera will immediately begin flashing red as it is announcing itself. This step is very important and you will be repeating it a lot each time you want to begin a wireless tethering session. There is one very important tip to know. As soon as you set your camera to wireless tether shooting fixed, Make sure that you exit out of the Fujifilm menu altogether and return to the regular camera view. If you remain inside the camera menu after you choose wireless tether shooting fixed, your camera will have problems enabling wireless tether shooting. This literally took me hours to figure out and to test so that you won't have to. Just press the DISP back button to get out of the menu. You can also half press the shutter button as well. Depending upon how you have your camera display set, you may now see the wireless connection icon right here. At this point, in order for Windows, Mac, or an iPad to be able to see your camera on the network and to begin the wireless tethering process, you are going to need at least one app running on your computer. If you are a Capture One user, the Capture One Pro 23 version 16.2 and higher is already set to do this. The supported Fujifilm cameras are the X-T5, the X-H2, and the X-H2S. When you open Capture One, make sure that you go into the preferences and verify that there is a check in the box called wireless LAN. 
Then go to your Fujifilm camera and make sure that wireless tether shooting fixed is set in the connection mode. It may take up to 30 to 60 seconds for Capture One to see your camera. In Capture One, go to the tethering tab and look for a tool called camera. It may still say no cameras available. And if it does, click on no cameras available to force it to reset. If it doesn't ever appear, close Capture One, turn off the Fujifilm camera, then turn the camera back on and return to the connection mode menu and make sure that wireless wireless tether shooting fixed is selected. Then reopen Capture One and see if it works. If it still doesn't, then you need to head out to your local store, pick up some Maker's Mark and just try and forget the whole thing. Either that or please somebody post in the comments a better suggestion. Assuming that you do see your camera there, go ahead and select it and now you can begin shooting wirelessly tethered to Capture One on your computer. To test this out, I walked around my studio, took various photos and they traveled wirelessly from my camera to my computer in the next room. You can wirelessly tether to an iPad using Capture One. Connect your iPad to the same Wi-Fi network that your camera is connected to. Assuming that you have registered your camera to your Wi-Fi network, like I showed you previously, all you need to do now is tell your camera to announce itself to your iPad. As before, choose wireless tether shooting fixed. After a few seconds, you should see your camera appear on the iPad screen. Once it does, tap on connect. The camera will then connect and you can start shooting. Your photos will wirelessly transfer from your camera to your iPad and appear right here. From the iPad app, you can also adjust all kinds of settings inside the Fujifilm camera, such as changing the camera's film simulation and so forth. Let's now talk about Adobe Lightroom Classic. You will need a plugin to make this work and you have three choices that are supported by Fujifilm. The first two are Tether Shooting Plugin and the Tether Shooting Plugin Pro. At a whopping $80, the Pro version does include a special panel to check images and also provides a live shooting view option. Besides these two Adobe plugins, there's also a plugin for the Fujifilm GFX models as well. Remember that with these Lightroom plugins, you can also tether your camera using a wired USB connection straight to your computer as well. Here's a list where you can pause the video and see all of the compatible cameras as of the date of this video. If you use both Capture One and Lightroom, make sure that Capture One is closed before trying to connect to your camera through Lightroom and vice versa. I must say that the tethering plugins for Lightroom aren't that great considering how much they cost. And I had problems even just installing it. Adobe's Creative Cloud Manager told me that it was installed, however, the plugin failed to appear in Lightroom's plugin manager. I eventually found this tiny little notice here telling me that I might have to download yet another installer to make it work. Basically two installers for one app. So I did that and it still didn't work. It was only after some random combination of closing and then reopening Lightroom and then uninstalling and reinstalling two different installers that I was finally able to get it to work. Once you do get the plugin installed inside of Lightroom, you'll need to go into file, tethered capture, and then start tethered capture. A window will appear where you can create a session name, choose a destination for your captured photos and so forth. Once you close that out, you will see a detecting your camera window appear. Switch over to your Fujifilm camera and as before, go to the menu, into connection mode and then choose wireless tether shooting fixed. You will know if your camera is ready to wirelessly tether in Lightroom if you see a small camera indicator window appear that you can move around the screen. In addition, at least on a Mac, you will see the Fujifilm Tether Plugin Pro app icon appear in the top bar area. Most likely in Windows, it will probably be near your start menu where your other programs are listed. If you click on it, it gives you the option to either go into the control panel, if you have the Pro version that is, or open Open the tethering preferences. In the preferences, you definitely want to make sure that both USB and network are checked, especially if you are having trouble connecting. Also, make sure that search within the segment is selected. You have some additional options such as setting the file type, some automated shooting options, and a histogram, which I do like, and some settings for live preview and keyboard shortcuts. If you have the pro version of the plugin, you will also have a complete control panel that allows for live view and adjusting various cameras settings. The live view actually works fairly well and I found it to be slightly faster than the Capture One version. However, I found the Capture One wireless tethering software and experience to be overall more reliable. That was my experience. Yours may be different. But this begs a question. Is there a solution to avoid having to pay for a plug-in in order to wirelessly tether to Lightroom? In fact, 
Yes, there is, and it involves using the Fujifilm X Acquire app, which I'm going to talk about right now. Fujifilm X Acquire is a free app from Fujifilm for both Windows and Mac, and it supports a large range of Fujifilm cameras. It's designed to do two things. First, allow you to tether your camera to your computer, either with a USB wired or a wireless connection. And second, allow you to back up your camera settings and then restore them at a future date. I made a whole video about backing up your Fujifilm camera, so if interested, search for it on the channel. Once you download and install the X Acquire app, there is an important setting that you need to check first before you begin using it. In the preferences area, under the X Acquire app, under camera search, make sure that you have ticked the network box. Also, choose search within the segment. This tells the app to search out for any active camera trying to connect to your active tethering session. Now, if you are in a public place with lots of other cameras, also wirelessly tethering, you may want to specify an IP address instead. To get the IP address of your connected camera to put in this box, go into connection settings under information and you will see it right at the bottom right here. Remember that you will only see that after you choose wireless tether shooting fixed. When you add this string of numbers, make sure that you include the dots between the numbers exactly as shown. If you do need to set up your camera with a specific IP address instead, see the link to the Fujifilm setup instructions that I will include in the description below this video. But for almost everybody else, just select search within the segment. For file type, I would ensure that both JPEG and RAW are checked like it's shown here. You can also check the boxes to additionally save these RAW and JPEG files to your SD card on your camera. However, when Fujifilm themselves say, at default settings, pictures taken with the camera during wireless tethered photography are not saved to the camera memory card, that should scare everyone a little bit. Yes, you can change the defaults here, but what about other software now or in the future, or bugs or screw ups in the software itself? My advice to you is this, always, assume that you are never getting any images saved to the SD card during a wireless tethering session. Get in the habit of periodically checking your computer as images are taken to make sure that it's working correctly. You do not want to end an important shoot only to discover that your photos were not wirelessly properly transmitted to the computer and they're not on the SD card either. That wouldn't be good. I know, I'm a bit paranoid about this, but I felt that it was worth mentioning. Regarding the rest of the settings, there's no need to specify anything inside linked software area right here. Just click OK to save your changes and you're good to go. At this point, the Fujifilm X Acquire app is doing nothing. It has not discovered your camera. You can verify this by taking a look at the icon window right here and you will see that both backup and restore menu items are grayed out. So you will need to once again broadcast out your camera using the same technique we've talked about before, enabling connection mode to wireless tether shooting fixed. After about maybe 15 to 30 seconds, Fujifilm X Acquire should connect and you'll see that both the backup and restore menu items are now enabled. At this point, you could really use any editing program or workflow because the entire purpose of the Fujifilm X Acquire app is to receive photos from your camera and then drop them into a folder on your computer. You can then edit those photos like you would any regular photos in your catalog. Remember that I mentioned earlier that I was gonna give you a free workaround so that you could wirelessly tether your Fujifilm camera right into Lightroom. Here's what you need to do. Now that you have the Fujifilm X Acquire app all set up, open up Lightroom, go into File, Auto Import, Auto Import Settings. From here, you'll need to select what folder you want Lightroom to constantly be monitoring for newly captured photos. This should be the same folder that you had specified earlier when you had set up the Fujifilm X Acquire app. You can also decide where you want the photos moved to, as well as choose some develop settings. One tip here for Fujifilm users is to apply the camera settings choice, which is located under defaults. If you do this, then when you open up and edit your captured photo, the RAW file will already have applied to it the correct film simulation that you used at the time you shot the photo. Once you've closed this out, and assuming that you've already started your Fujifilm X Acquire app and broadcasted out your camera wirelessly following the steps that I showed you, you should see a little floatable window appear from the Fujifilm X Acquire app. At this point, you can begin shooting. And as you can see here, any photo that you take will automatically be transferred from your camera straight to your computer. Then the Fujifilm 
film Exequire app will step in and then add that photo to your specified capture folder. And because Lightroom has now been scanning that folder the whole time, it will then automatically import each photo as it comes right into your catalog. I actually think this is a great inexpensive solution for Lightroom users and I found it personally to be a bit more reliable than the plug-in tethering app that Adobe sells for Lightroom. I am sure that there are many more tricks and ways to wirelessly tether your Fujifilm camera. One item that I actually didn't cover today was using the FTHX network grip for the X-H2 camera. That would be a separate video, but just know that you can connect to it as well and wirelessly tether with it. I also didn't discuss any type of connecting wirelessly and transferring photos using the current Fujifilm app. That would be also another separate video as well. Remember that no matter how good your camera is or how fast your router will run or the health of your overall network in general, wireless tethering will always be slower than wired tethering. However, the benefits of not having a USB cord tied to your camera may make it worth it. I have one final word I want to say. Any kind of computer wireless networking can present issues and problems outside the scope of your camera itself. If you have difficulty in getting all of this network stuff to work, please don't let it spoil your experience with the camera or taint your love of photography. If it does get too frustrating, then just disconnect this thing altogether, go off the grid, and get back into shooting amazing photos. Wireless tethering is just a tool, and you certainly don't need it to enjoy using your Fujifilm camera. Well, thank you so much for watching, particularly those of you that stayed all the way till the end. I hope you found it helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in a new video very soon. Take care.